Hey, fourth grade, how are you? This is our first video, our only video, for the week of April 27th through May 1st. And the supplies that you're going to need are your packet from Success Center and a pencil. And so you need to turn to page 81 when you get those supplies. And we're going to be working from page 81 right now. Before we begin, I want to remind you that as we're working, we're going to be using our cube strategies. And it's going to be really important to think through these problems because these are multi-step problems. And so we're really going to have to concentrate on the numbers and units that we're going to use because sometimes we may not use all the numbers and units. What is the question actually asking us? We want to underline things in there. We want to box those math action words. Remember, we want to evaluate, which means think about what we're doing and eliminate any of those numbers we don't need, okay, and make sure we don't need them. And most importantly, show your work and check. So let's get right in. On our first question, on page 81, it talks about, okay, I'm on question one, the owner of a house painting company bought 63 cans of white paint and 29 cans of blue paint. The company has eight trucks, and each truck can carry 11 cans of paint. That's a lot of information, okay? So, we're just reading right now though. Which equation can the owner use to find C, the total number of cans of paint that his trucks can carry? So let's go back up here and look and see what we need to box and circle and underline. So number one, okay, we're talking about paint. So he has bought 63 cans of white. We need to mark that to make sure you're doing that. 29 cans of blue paint. Now here's where it gets interesting. It talks about how his how many trucks he has. Well, there are eight trucks and each, ooh, that's a good important math word right there. And do you remember um, what you've learned from class, okay? So from class, we would know that if each is in the information part of the problem, we're probably multiplying. So let's put this out to the side. We might be doing some multiplying here. That each truck, can carry 11 cans of paint. So they can carry 11 cans. All right, and then it says, which equation can the owner use to find C, whoops, what did I do here? To find C, okay, so C is going to have to be the answer the total number of cans of paint that his trucks can carry. So we have another one of those math action words, the total. So we're going to need a total here. So whatever we do, we need to make sure that in the end, the answer is C. So I come through and I can do some, um, I can do some crossing off of things if something doesn't equal C. But I look in each of these and look, it says equal C, equal C, equal C, equal C. So I can't mark anything off because of that, okay? What I do need to figure out is um, what I'm gonna do with all of these numbers. There are four different numbers. What am I gonna do with them? I'd like for you to decide that. So I want you to pause the video, solve this problem, and then come back and check to see if you were thinking the correct way. Okay, so pause it. Okay, now that you're back, let's look and see some of the things that we had to solve in this problem. First of all, we need to know the total amount of paint. What do we do for the total amount of paint? We add those. So I have the white, which I labeled with W, the blue paint I labeled with a B, and so when we put them together, we have 92 total cans of paint, okay? Well, so I needed both of those numbers. And then it talks about this um, paint company owner has 11 trucks, but in those 11 trucks, they can only carry 11 cans of paint each. So I need to see what are the total amount of cans of paint that his trucks can carry? 
So if I look, 8 times 11 is 88 cans. Well, that gives me the total number of cans of paint, doesn't it? Well, he can't carry any more than 88 cans of paint. So if we look up here, he doesn't have enough trucks to make that all in one trip, does he? So if I look here, I can't subtract to ever get a total. And this problem is subtracting. So instantly I'm going to say you're not it. Okay. Yes, I do need a total. But I don't need a total of 92 plus 8 because we wouldn't ever add paint to the number of trucks. That, that wouldn't make sense, okay? You, you wouldn't come. You have to add same kinds of things together, okay? And so if I come here, I have 8 times 11, which I figured out was 88 because he has 8 trucks and each truck can carry 11 paint cans. Aha! Uh -huh. That looks like what I came up with. Now, I did come in here because I was having trouble understanding the problem at first. And so I came in and I said, okay, I need to know the total paint just in case, you know? Well, that's where this one uses the total paint, but it's dividing it by the number 11. Well, that wouldn't give us the total number of cans of paint. That would give us the total number of amount of trucks he would need to carry the paint. So that's not what the question asked. Okay, it's kind of a weird question, but if you thought your way through it, I hope you got answer C. So let's look at number two. And on number two, it says, Michael earned $46 to buy DVDs. He bought four DVDs that each cost the same amount. He had $10 left after his purchase. Which equation shows how to find X, the cost of one DVD? So if we come in, whatever X is has to be the cost of one of the DVDs. Let's mark our problem here. So let's pick up some pen. And it says he earned $46. He can't get bigger than $46. I mean, that's all he has. So anywhere in our problem, we can't get bigger than 46. Okay. He bought four DVDs. Good. So we know what goes with the four. And they each cost the same. So they cost the same. Each tells us that somewhere in here, we're probably, since it's up in the information part of the problem and not in the question part of the problem, it means that we are probably going to have to multiply it sometime. He had $10. So he had some change left after his purchase. So he had $10 left over after his purchase. Now, inside our question, let's investigate it. Which equation shows how to find X, the cost of one DVD. Okay, so we need to find the cost of one DVD. Now, whether you labeled yours exactly like mine or not, it doesn't matter. But what I'd like for you to do is pause the video, come back when you're done, and let's check your answer. Okay. Now, I don't have the final answer here yet, but I want you to see that drawing a picture does not mean that you're showing weakness. You can actually draw a picture and find your answer. So let's look. I have my four DVDs here, and the cost of each is X because they told me that. X is the cost of one DVD. So if I were to put those all together, that would be my cost of the DVDs. I know I had $10 change left, so I have to add $10 in here, okay, because I didn't spend that yet. But if I put the cost of the DVDs, my leftover change all together, I should have $46, okay? So if I come over here, I need to eliminate anything that doesn't equal $46 in the end and see how this one equals 46. Well, I'm going to keep it in the running, but these don't. In the end, I have to still have $46. That's all the money that I have. So I'm going to get rid of the two things that don't make sense for my answer. 
So narrowing down your answer choices is important. So if we look, another way to say this would be x plus x plus x plus x. I don't have that in here, do I? I don't have an x plus x plus x plus x. But what I do have are four x's or four, this is another way to write a time sign, four times x. And even another way to write that is to say 4x. That means 4 times x. Well, I have that in this. I have a 4 times x here and a 4 times x here. And this one says plus 10, but this one says divided by 10. Which could be my answer here? A, of course. And if I were to do the math for that, and I were to be able to find the price of these, okay, they should add up to 46. So in the end, what would I need to say the total price of these were? $36, right? And if I took my $36 and divided it between the four DVDs, that would be what? $9 for each of those DVDs. And if I plugged that in, four times one of the DVDs, four times nine is 36, plus 10 equals 46. I've checked my work now, okay? So let's go back up to the top here where we have question number three. And let's read it and do some work on it. It says, Wendy and her mother picked flowers in the garden. Wendy picked 14 flowers. Her mother picked twice as many flowers as Wendy. After lunch, Wendy picked eight more flowers. Which equation could Wendy use to find F, the total number of flowers she and her mother picked? Well, let's come back up here and let's do some circling. Okay, so I'm gonna pick up a different color of marker. All right, and it says Wendy and her mother picked flowers in the garden. That's just information. Wendy picked 14 flowers. When you have a list of people doing, thing, it's a, doing things, it's always good to keep track of what they're doing. So we're gonna say Wendy equals 14. And we're going to need to remember those are flowers. So I'm just gonna put an F by it. So she picked 14 flowers. Her mother picked twice as many flowers as Wendy. So twice as many for mom. What does twice mean? Twice means you have to do it two times. And if you're doing something two times, I just said times there, didn't I? Two times. That means that mom, let me make that look like a time sign, that mom would be two times as much as Wendy's number. So there we go, two times as much as Wendy. And then it says, after lunch, Wendy picked eight more flowers. You have to know, you know what, I should have boxed that action word there. I have to know that more is also an action word. And if I have more, it means I'm going to put more with it. That's an adding clue right there. Okay, which equation could Wendy use to find F? the total number of flowers she and her mother picked. So I need the total for the number of flowers, okay? Pause the video. Which one of these makes sense with the amount of digging we did in our problem and the information we have here, okay? And I forgot to put plus eight, all right? Pause the video, come back, and we'll talk about the answer. All right. I have a little bit more written down because I didn't write everything down. You needed to do a little bit of work too. So I have Wendy has 14 flowers. Her mom has two times as many or twice as many as Wendy. So I did two times 14 earlier. But then it comes back and after lunch, Wendy picked eight more flowers. So Wendy gets a plus eight on hers too, okay? I could have put that up here if I wanted to. So I could have moved that plus eight up to here, but I went ahead and kept it, kept it separate. Okay, so if we look through each of these, which of these kind of matches what we have? 
Well, look on number one, we have a 14. That's Wendy. Yay. And then we need to add her to mom. Mom was two times 14. And we can switch those factors, 14 times two, okay? But this one doesn't have the extra flowers in it that she picked after lunch, okay? Now we have another one where we have a 14 plus eight. Well, that's definitely windy right there, okay? But if we look here, this is doing two times Wendy's number inside of here. Hmm, that's not gonna work. Plus mom is supposed to be the one that goes with times two. Still had pieces in there, but not exactly right. Okay, and then we come inside here, and then we have probably Wendy. Okay, and we have all of Wendy's stuff in here, and then we have mom isn't with a times two though. And anyway, we, we can't use that one. Mom still doesn't have her times two going in the right place. But if I look at this one, I have a 14 plus eight. There's Wendy. 14 times two, well, that's mom. And if we put Wendy and mom together, total is always telling us, okay, we need the big number in the end, okay, which is gonna equal F. And so D was our answer here. Okay, see how you had to pick through those to make sure you got everything that was included within our problem. All right, number four is our last one that we're gonna go over this week. It says, a computer costs $315 more than a cell phone. Together, the computer and the cell phone cost $805, and they give us a picture right here. And it says, which equation can be used to find C, the cost of the cell phone? So if we look up here, we know exactly what a computer costs. So we're going to circle that up with computer. It costs that much more. And you had to see this word more than a computer. That means this is a plus 315 together, okay, more than a cell phone, okay? Together, the computer and cell phone costs $805. Actually, we circle numbers, don't we? So let me circle that. And together is kind of like the words all together. That means we're supposed to add things, right? Now, we need to find C, and that's just going to be the cost of the cell phone here. That's all we need the cost of, okay? So they're showing us that here's the cost of the cell phone. It's this. Now the computer has to be that much plus the 315. And if we smoosh those or add those together, we have a total of 805. That's what we need to find down here. Is there anything we can kick off for the total number? No, they all equal 805. Now, do I have anything in here that tells me that I'm going to subtract? Okay. Well, some of you might be thinking, well, if I took 805 and I subtracted 315, okay, that would give me the cost of the cell phone, right? But it's saying that the cell phone minus $315 would be 805. There's no way, okay? One way to do this problem is to subtract, but this isn't the subtracting problem that would do it. Let's look at B. If I took C, which is the cost of the cell phone, and I added $315 to it, would it equal 805? Not the cost of the cell phone, okay? No, that can't work. What if I took two cell phones and then subtracted $315? That doesn't even make sense. That wouldn't give us the cost of a cell phone because we go, we'd be saying cell phone plus cell phone minus 315. Okay, no, that's not gonna give me the cost of the cell phone. I'm not ever doing any subtracting up here according to my picture anyway. But let's look at this one. We better hope it's this one, right? I'm gonna bump it up just a little bit. And it says, 
if I take the cost of a cell phone, which I'm going to put the C inside of it, and I add another cost of a cell phone with it, and then I put this little bit extra in here, this 315, which is an additional amount, okay, that we had to add on, could that all together equal 805? A C plus a C plus a 315 equal 805? Then we could figure out the cost of the cell phone, couldn't we? It's just the two C's here. This is the answer. This one was pretty close, not this one. This one was pretty close right here, but it just said three plus, or the C plus this equals that. Wasn't quite right on that one, was it? Okay. All right. It's all about digging and reading and understanding the problem, isn't it? Now, um, I've looked on Study Island and who's been doing their studying on Study Island. My expectations are at least 30 minutes a week on Study Island. This is going to be a great help for you when you get to fifth grade next year. I hope you take advantage of that. Hey, you guys could even do some reading part of that if you wanted to. You're welcome to do that, and I'll keep track of that and give it to your reading teacher if you'd like me to. Anyway, we've come to the end of our video. Make sure that you're doing your math. Make sure you're doing some reading every day as well, and I hope that you've had, um, you have a good week this week, and I will see you next time in the next video. Bye-bye for now.